God, he's got a receiver. Leaping, tries, made for it, and it's blocked for the touchdown. And it's Darius Slate. He's the guy who can get open, Bob. He had his defender beat by three steps. Caught by Slate. Runs out of a tackle. He's got a first down to the 40. Down the left side by 30. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Dives to the end zone. Is he in? Touchdown, Giants! Darius Slate, 54 yards. Slate secures it. Puts on the Jets. You think he's not making a difference for this offense? Since the end of the league in 2019, no New York Giant has caught more touchdown passes than this guy, who's coming off two really good games despite the outcome. Yesterday, Darius Slayton joins us live on Giant Scan. Darius, how are you, man? Thanks for joining us on a short week. Yeah, no problem. It's good. I'm good. Appreciate you having me on. So uh, let's put yesterday out of the way quickly here. What was the message from your coach, who Brian Dable usually is, is direct and right <coughs> to the point? about what the heck happened and now how do you guys get ready for Thanksgiving? Um, pretty much just, you know, we got a short week. We got a really good division opponent that we got to go visit. So, you know, obviously we, we took today to learn from the things that we did wrong um, yesterday, you know, try to shore some of those things up. But, you know, obviously on these short weeks in the NFL, you got to move fast. What'd you learn? What happened? Um, we just had some, some miscues. Uh, we had a couple turnovers just Things that set our offense back a few times. Um, we actually, overall, we didn't we didn't execute uh, badly the whole game. We just had some bad miscues that kind of set us back. But you know, we'll do better going forward. What's it uh, What's it going to be like playing big stage Thanksgiving? The whole world watching, huge division game. Obviously, you guys lost to the Cowboys. You weren't you weren't playing that day when you guys played them back in the first part of the season. But have you thought about how cool that's going to be? Yep. Uh, yeah, you know I've haven't played on Thanksgiving yet in my career and you know it's always been something that I've watched my whole life so it's obviously you know very exciting to be able to be a part of it this year hey we had the story yesterday morning about maybe Odell's gonna come visit after Thanksgiving and the same goes for the Cowboys I don't know if you saw this but you know Micah Parsons is tweeting at Beckham I had Michael Gallup on last week he said hey Odell come on down um, after the unfortunate news today, and you hate to hear that Wondell Robinson's going to be out, Darius, are you willing to do what the Cowboys are doing here? It's saying, hey, come on down, Odell. Um, you know, obviously there's people on our team that were here when he was here. They love him. You know, he's got friends here, you know, Shep uh, being one of those guys. You know, I know they're really close, but, um, you know, I'm all for anybody that will help our team. So, you know, if he, he wants to come here and sign here, you know, I think he knows where home is and, uh I'll leave it at that. Yeah, you'll leave it at that. You're not going to grovel like the Cowboys, right? Up, like, is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> All right, those are my words, Darius. Th those are not yours. I want to talk about what you're doing in the community as well. We teased that before we went to the commercial as you were waiting patiently here. Tell me about the Far Rockaway Giants, which is a youth league team working with the NYPD. I know it means so much to you. Yeah, so kind of what it is, is it's, uh, it's police officers that are working with these kids in this community of Far Rockaway. It's out in Queens, a little bit uh, further out from Queens. And um, basically, you know, they take, they take these kids and they, they help them with everything. You know, they mentor them. Um, some of them, they need bare essentials like clothes, food, things like that. And these officers kind of serve as big mentors to those kids. And um, you know, we got involved with them and I just felt really drawn to the program because, you know, I feel like kids are the future and, you know, I feel like if we can pour into them and make them as good as they can be, then the sky's the limit for our country and for the world going forward. How rewarding is it to see that impact, Darius, to see the looks on those kids' faces when you know you're making a difference? Extremely rewarding. I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, they smile. They they get so excited. Obviously, when we come around because we're professional football players, and I would have been the same way when I was their age. But, you know, I feel like little do they know, like they, these officers, what they do for them day in and day out. You know, that's that's massive. You know, they're there for them 24/7, uh, 365, and they have their own lives, their own families, things they're trying to do. But they set aside time for these kids. So, you know, I think that they're just in a they're in a great situation this program has been awesome and you know i hope that it continues to flourish yeah we encourage everyone to watch good morning football on wednesday a deeper dive of the work on the work that you and your teammate julian love are doing here with the far rockaway giants and in the community there in the tri-state area on the holiday season as we get to the holiday season as you guys get ready for a game thursday thanksgiving 
in Dallas. Darius Slayton of your New York Giants. Appreciate it, man. Happy holidays to you and the family. Thank you. Happy holidays. You appreciate you having me on. Thank you, sir. Darius Slayton, everybody. Coming up next, how about the other team in New York? What's the issue with the offense? And can it be fixed with a quarterback change? What we found out in the locker room yesterday. That's next. I'm kind of sort of out of it, but that Vikings loss kept Chicago at least breathing here, Ian. That really is neither here nor there. The, the story really is Justin Fields and the shoulder injury. It's his left shoulder. They're in New York this week to face the Jets. What do we know about Fields? Yeah, and you could see Fields on the sideline kind of messing with the shoulder. Clearly something was not right. The shoulder uh, around the neck, kind of the clavicle area. He's having some MRIs and other tests today just to see what damage is there, if any. And I would say going in, the belief is that it's not necessarily something that would keep him off the field, although no one has said that. For sure, that's just the early indication before the MRI. Hoping to get some results at some point soon. But of course, you know, Fields runs maybe more than any other quarterback and has done so so incredibly successfully, setting himself up to be one of the feel-good stories, maybe even comeback stories of this season. But it does put himself at risk a little bit, and some of that risk is of injury. So we will see what the results of the MRI uh, is on field to shoulder. But going in, the hope is that it's not something serious. Okay, before we get to the Giants and Adore Jackson, um, just we'll pull the curtain back. Did I introduce Tom? Did I forget to introduce Tom? Did I? I, I wasn't I'm here. I don't think I said your name, matter. Tom. I teased okay. earlier that you would I be on. I apologize. We now come on three people. Tom Pelissero. It's That's not a Tom. slight. It wasn't intentional as well. Tom, hold on. Adore Jackson. Ian, what do we got? <laughs> Adoree Jackson expected to be out four to six weeks following the MRI. It is an MCL sprain for Adoree Jackson, who also obviously is one of the team's returners. And I would say led some questions about the wisdom of using one of your best players in as a returner. That said, for Brian Dabo and for the rest of the Giants coaches, use your really good players. Injuries happen, and unfortunately, that is the situation here with Adoree Jackson. But if the Giants stay in it, if they stay as, they've been, as they have been, a realistic and real chance at the playoffs, then I would expect Dory Jackson back when that all happens. All right, Tom. Meanwhile, Andrew, <laughs> Ian, I'm Tom. Uh, another blow for the Giants at the wide receiver position. Wandale Robinson out for the season with a torn ACL. He was a player that they had big plans for in that offense. Yesterday was his best game. Targeted 13 times. His first 100-yard receiving effort before suffering. What is, as Brian Dable confirmed this morning, a season-ending knee injury for Robinson. So think about this as the Giants were drawing up their wide receiver group back in the offseason. You have Kenny Galladay who has barely played, not really made any type of impact. You had Kadarius Toney, who really didn't play and then eventually was traded to the Chiefs. You had uh, Darius Slayton, who is still there. Sterling Shepard, though, suffered a season-ending knee injury himself. It's a lot of challenges for Dable, Mike Kafka, in that offense at a time that the Giants, for the first time in the Dable era, seem to be you know, fighting back a little bit after coming off that game yesterday against the Lions. Yep, in a short week now. By the way, Darius Slayton's going to join us shortly in about 15 minutes. Short week, they go to Dallas, the two teams mentioned. You guys talked about it yesterday morning in the Odell Beckham Jr. story. Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe this is the Odell. You know, sweepstakes. Get to that in a second. Ian, real quick. Um, uh, I lost my train of thought. Zach Wilson. Here, I... Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about Zach Wilson because, of course, in New York, which is where I am, it's a huge, huge topic. And in New Jersey, where the Jets actually are, Zach Wilson really struggling mightily against the Patriots and, uh, you know, coming under the podium afterward and basically saying that uh, not really taking ownership for, for the way he played, which is, I know, something that rankled to people in his locker room. Sounds like he's talked to Robert Sala and immediately feels resourceful about his comments. I do not expect uh, any sort of knee-jerk reaction from the New York Jets regarding Zach Wilson. Uh, the Patriots' defense is really good. They're not the, he's not the first young quarterback to look really bad against the Patriots, so I would be surprised if the Jets made any sort of move now, but I know they're meeting, going over the film, and figuring out what the next step okay, is. Okay, with Joe Flacco inactive the last couple of weeks and Mike White is the number two. Now, let's get to Thanksgiving and Odell, Tom, because those were two of the teams we talked about with Beckham planning on visits potentially to both. What's the latest? 
Well, Andrew Zine and I reported yesterday the plan is for Odell Beckham Jr. to take visits after the Thanksgiving holiday. Visits to the Cowboys and the Giants likely at some point next week. So for Odell, who of course is still coming back from that torn ACL that he suffered in the Super Bowl, a re-tear of the ACL that he had the previous year, and all, by all indications, the knee is in much better shape this time around. By the time he takes those visits, he potentially should be able to pass a physical, which is a big benchmark here. It's going to take some time for whatever team that signs him to be able to ramp him up to speed, let him learn the offense and everything else that comes with playing the wide receiver position. But you should be able to add a weapon for the stretch run. So where does Odell ultimately want to go, Ian? That remains to be seen. There could be other teams that get into the mix as well. But the Cowboys have put on the all-out blitz for weeks now for Odell Beckham Jr. And just as we're on the show here, Stephen Jones on the radio said, quote, we're probably not going to be talking about that much because it's getting to be pretty strategic right now. So three weeks of come on, Odell. But now we're we're tamping this thing down as we get the crunch time. Uh, you know, I'll ask Terry Slayton coming up in a second. Ian, I'm told, is now on the phone. Tom Pellicero. So just, just to be clear, to recap the segment, Ian gone, me, Tom Pellicero.